Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. Let's speak about the serpent. Who and what was the serpent? The Nachash. In the Hebrew, the Nachash. Who and what was the serpent in the garden? So we have the serpent in the garden in the first book of HaTorah, which you would call the Bible. The book that's called Genesis, Genesis in translation, Bereshit. We have the Nachash. The Nachash. Many people have spoken on this serpent in the garden. The pastors and preachers have preached about the serpent in the garden. Right? And the and the tree. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the temptation, the temptation of Adam Wa Hawa. Right? Adam and Eve in the garden. And who was the serpent? Some say the serpent was the devil, was was Diablos, was Hasatan. Was Mastema, right? Others say that the serpent was was Christ. Some think that the serpent in the garden, right, was Christ, and actually what it was was to awaken, awaken humanity, and to free humanity from, from, from this 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 trap, this quote matrix. Some say, so to speak. So, the Gnostic Gospels actually has it that actually Yeshua laughs at that suggestion. Yeshua laughs at the Gnostic Gospel at the suggestion that he was a Nachash. It's very interesting. I need to bring that up to really show you and kind of share with you because if you get to see it and read it for yourself, we can probably dismiss that particular theory of the serpent. We want to call this right here the serpent in the garden or the serpent in your brain. Is it the serpent in the garden or the reptile, the reptilian in your brain? Now also when we speak about the reptilian, people talk about the reptilian and shapeshifters. You probably heard a lot of um theories, right? Conspiracies, conspiracy theories, right? Some credible and some very so called incredible. Right? But let's touch on this particular with Yeshua, right, concerning the serpent, right? Was Yeshua, was Jesus, was the one they called Jesus Christ, was he the serpent, right, in the, the Gan Ba'eden, in the Garden of Delights, that is translated as the Garden of Eden, was he? So here, 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 here's a good research for ones and ones. You can look at some of the words that we're researching, check out some of the sites. Now we're going to actually go to this particular site right here. Just to zoom in on the point, the secret book of John, the apocryphon of John Yohanan. Right, let's click on this right here. We went to this previously, so I think, yeah, this is the page right here. And let's actually go up here. And the keyword we're going to search is, 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 is eagle right we're gonna find on page eagle let's look up eagle right there okay so the eagle is one time all right so here we have it right here let's bring this over so let's put this into context here and um let's touch on this part right here let's touch on the part where it is written, it did not happen the way Moshe said it did. He took a rib and made the woman, right? Quote, end quote, right? Now, actually, the, the Hebrew word for, for rib is very interesting from the Hebrew, the HD, from the Hebrew definition. But let's just take this from low degrees to high degrees. Quote, he took a rib and made the woman. Adam saw the woman standing next to him, the light-filled Epi Noah. Epinoia, 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 immediately appeared to him. He, she raised up the veil that dulled his mind. He sobered up from the dark drunkenness and he recognized his own counterpart. He said, now we can compare this with even the Torah right here, but he said, this is bone from my bones, flesh from my flesh. Because of this, a man will leave his mother and father and be joined to a woman and those two will become one flesh for they will send his helper to him All right now sophia now sophia corresponds to the chokma chokma in hebrew the divine feminine principle even in the beginning even in creation Right, we discern this from the Hebrew scriptures in the first words of the Hebrew Bible, Bereshith, that Chokmah, Chokmah, 
in the Mishle Shlomo, in the Proverbs of Solomon, Proverbs of Solomon, um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It says that um, wisdom is the principal thing, right? Get wisdom, right? Wisdom is the principal thing. Now, when it says principal thing, the word is reishith. In the first word of Genesis, of Bereshith, the first book of the Bible, the Hebrew, we say Torah, what you call Genesis, it's known as Bereshith bara Elohim et hashemayim wa et haaret. In the beginning, right, Bereshith, some say Barashith, but that's not correctly pointed, but in the correct pointing, Bereshith, in, not the beginning, but in beginning. Simple, plain Hebrew be Bereshith. But now with that light of Proverbs of the Mishle Shlomo, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, from the Hebrew perspective, we know that wisdom, Chokma, that she is the Reishith, right? She is the beginning, Reishith. And furthermore, in Proverbs chapter 8, we have a full elaboration of the role of the divine feminine principle. The one who, Robenu Yeshua, our master, our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Yeshua HaNotri, he says that wisdom is justified by all of her children. Wisdom is justified by all of her children. So we have our father, and we can see that mother, the mother principle, the divine Hebrew principle, the feminine principle, I would say the divine feminine in the beginning. So in Reishith, in wisdom, in Chokmah. Now Chokmah is known as, we say, the Hebrew Sophia. So we have the Sophia here. So here's it's the connection of Sophia here. So Sophia, our sister, came down descending innocently so as to regain what she had lost. Therefore, she was called life. We have Chai, 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 Chawa, Chawa, Chawa. Right, the mother of the living, Chaim, Chaim, the one from the providence of the authority of Shemaim, of the heavens. By her assistance, people can achieve perfect knowledge, the da'at, the knowledge. Remember the tree, even the Kabbalistic, the Hebrew, the tree of life. I ain't going to refer to that, but first things first. Now, here it says, um, I appeared as an eagle perched on the tree of knowledge, which is the epinoia from the pure providence of light in order to teach them and raise them up from sleep's depths, right? From sleep's depths. Now, here's what's interesting too. Let's see if we have this right here. Let's see if it has, if it uses the word serpent. Right, okay, here we go right here. So here, right here, right here, in this section right here. Now, we're in this gospel here, right, of truth. It says, however, I cause them to eat, right? So here, how far is this from here? Now, this is very interesting to really go through more fully full, right, in a fuller full, but we're zooming in right here, right? So it says, however, I cause them to eat. I asked the Savior, Adonai, Adoni, isn't it the serpent, Hanachash, that caused Adam, Adam to eat? Isn't it the serpent, Hanachash? Now, he, speaking of Adon, Ha Adon, Yeshua, Ha Notri, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, he smiled and replied, The serpent, Hanachash, caused them to eat in order to produce the wickedness of the desire to reproduce that would make Adam helpful to him. All right? So just, just note this right here, the two places, the serpent, and we also have the eagle, right? Where he says that he was the eagle, right? The eagle above. Now, I think there's another Gnostic gospel that also testimony that brings that out, right? Now, even amongst the Gnostics, there is the true Right? There's the Hebrew, you could say the true Meshahawian Messiah, the true Christian Gnostic perspective. And then there is the, 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 the Gentile Gnosis that creeps in. So when we look at the Gnostic Gospels, we have to have discernment right, concerning 
you know, the particular gospel, the particular Gnostic writing. It's not all of the same measure. It's like we have to know the difference between Moshiach, right, the Messiah, Christ, and between Antichrist, right? So in this particular one right here is very a very viable Gnostic gospel right here because it points out that Moshiach, Yeshua, Jesus, as they will say, Jesus is not the serpent, but rather right, Yeshua, right, or Jesus, or the one who the world called Jesus Christ, he is actually the eagle. Let's let's bring this up right here. Now, this is very important when we look into Ha Torah, right, concerning, you know, concerning the um, you know, concerning the eagle, the symbology of the eagle. Right. right here, right here. Here we go, right here. So we see this one right here which says, I appeared. Right. So Moshe Yeshua said that he appeared as an eagle perched, right? An eagle perched on the tree of knowledge. Right? On that tree of knowledge. That very same tree that according to Ha Torah, that Adam, not Adam and Eve, but Adam. Aleph Dam was commanded not to eat up. So Yeshua identifies himself with the eagle. And this is in perfect harmony, right, with the Hebrew and the Hebraic teaching. When we approach the scripture and the Bible from the Hebrew perspective with the da'at, with the knowledge right here. So Yeshua is not the serpent, right, but he is the eagle that appeared, right? And vis-a-vis -vis the serpent or Ha-Nachash, vis-a-vis the serpent right here, we have these two right here. Here we go. However, I caused them to eat. All right. He says, however, I caused them to eat. I asked the Savior, Lord, Adoni, ha Adon, Adoni, Adoni, Lord, isn't it the serpent? Like, wasn't it the Nahash that caused them, that caused Adam, get this, that caused Adam to eat? And he smiled and replied, the serpent, ha Nahash." cause them to eat in order to produce wickedness, ratchetness of the desire to reproduce that would make Adam, Aleph Dam, first blood, Adam, helpful to him, to who? To Han Nachash. So, so what is the serpent? Who and what is the serpent? Is it the serpent in the Gan, Ba'edin, in the Garden of Eden? Or is it the reptilian, right? The reptilian in your brain. Right, the reptilian brain. So this is going to be a strictly a metaphysical, metaphysical teaching. But first, to just ground on some of the basics, right? When we look at man being created in the image and after the likeness of Hilahim, right? And the true Yahweh, hey, he who be who he be, right? Is the true Trinity, he who be who he be, Ah Bain Rahak Adosh, he who be who he be, he who was, he who is. Right, he who is to come. Wahu Haya, Wahu Hawe, Wahu Yihye, Bit Tifara, 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 Tifarai, even on the tree, even the tree of life, Tiferet. So, the next thing we need to put this in the perspective and look at, right, the tree, right, the tree of life, because that's what, when Adam was expelled from the Gan Ba'adim, this is what he was denied access to. Remember, there was two trees. Right? There was two trees in the Gan Ba'adin. And it's very interesting. We start to look at the narrative, what is said, right? And through proper, right, through proper, how can I say, through proper um, dividing of the word. In other words, through proper knowledge of the word. If we go over what happened in the Garden of Eden and what even the Nahash had asked, and even how the the woman, right, the Isha, Right, the Isha, how how the woman speaking about Hawa, how she answered, and the fact that Adam, right, did not answer. So, in looking at this metaphysically, right, metaphysically speaking, right, let's put this into context. So, we have here, right, the reptile, right. This is the reptile in man. Man is a trinity. Man is a trinity. Man is spirit as spirit. God consciousness, spirit, intellect. He has soul, mind, soul, psyche, right, even emotional consciousness, and he has a carbon organic structure, right? The carbon, the carbon, 
carbon, carbon, carbon, the carbon, the carbon organic structure, right? And this now composes what we call and refer to as the body, right? Or in the Brit Hadasha sense, we have the temple, right? Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of Hilehem? So here, here, here. So here, 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 let's first of all get some basics right here because in order to really be able to decipher the Hebrew scriptures, one has to go to the HD, the Hebrew definition, right? And also to the science and sciences. So first things first, we first address the linguistic science to get the proper context of the text. You know, so going to get into that a little bit more right here. But what if I told you that humans are animals too? Right. According to the Hebrew scriptures, the word for animal that's used for animal in the Hebrew scriptures, notice the word animal doesn't appear in the King James Version of the Bible. So what word it was used to refer? The chayim, chayto, chay, chay. Chay means life. Chayto, the animal, the creature, the living creature, the chayim, life, the animated. Right. So what if I told you that humans are animals too? See, this is the key to decipherment. Right, of we can say of the mashal, right, of the parable, right, of the of the proverb, right. One might say of the metaphor, as it were, of the reishith and of the gan ba'eden, of the garden of Eden. So first of all, just briefly right here, when we speak about Adam, right, we speak about Adam, Aleph Tam, Adam, right, Adam, the metaphysics of Adam. The first movement of mind in its contact with life and substance. Adam, Aleph, Dam, also represents the generic man, right? The generic man. From a Hebrew perspective, we have the B'nai Adam, right? Which is like, like men low, and the B'nai Ish, Ish. It's interesting in the Hebrew when Hawa, Hawa came forward, how Adam recognized himself and he says that she shall be called Isha because she came from Ish. He didn't say that she shall be called Adam or Adama because Adama is the ground, that red earth, the reddish brown ground, the Adama. So who was Adam's mother? Right? Referring to the Adama. Right? So when we're speaking about the serpent, actually, right, some say the serpent is, is, is dual. There's the male and the female aspect of the serpent. But speaking of Adam right here, Right? Or the whole human race is a, the B'nai Adam, just general man, epitomized in an indivisible dual, right? an individual man idea, the man seed. Now, Hawa, Hawa Eve is the feminine aspect, right? the feminine aspect. So we have the feminine aspect right? of the feminine aspect of the generic Adam, the generic man. Outwardly manifest as Zakar u Nekeba. Zakar male u Nekeba. Zakar u Nekeba. If the ego or will, which is man, which is the Adam, the ego, right? The ego, or we can say the will, this is Adam, has adhered to wisdom, to Hokma. Right, to the Hebrew Sophia, to Chokmah, faithfully, and has carried out in its work, in its work, the plans that are idealized in Chokmah. Remember, Bereshith, Genesis in the Hebrew, once translated as in the beginning, more correctly with the Hebrew HD in wisdom, Bereshith, Bechokmah, in wisdom, right? Wisdom. Right, wisdom. So if the ego, right, that sense of I, who is the I? Right? Is it the Ani? Is it the Anoki? And the will or the will which is in, which is actually, which is the Adam, Aleph Dam, the first blood, has adhered to Hakma wisdom faithfully and has carried out its work, right? In its work, the plans that are idealized in Hakma, in wisdom. This is who Yahuwah Eloheinu was speaking to when he said, let us make man. He was speaking to Chokmah. He was speaking to the divine feminine principle. We could say the divine matriarch right, of creation, the divine feminine principle. 
right? Therefore, what Adam had done, he had violated. He did not carry out, right, that work, the work in its, his work, the plan that was idealized in Chokmah. But if, right, but if the ego or the will that is Adam had adhered to wisdom faithfully and had and had carried out its work, Adam's work, right, that was the garden, right, it used to be a garden of the plans that are idealized in Chokmah. It has created and it would have created a harmonious consciousness from the beginning. Aleph Dam Adam in the Gan Ba'edin is symbolical of that consciousness. So the Adam, right, the Adam, right, in the Gan Ba'edin is symbolical, is a, is a symbol of that consciousness. Everyone speaks about conscious and being conscious and consciousness. Well, that's the Aleph Dam, the first blood, the Adam in the Gan Ba'edin, the symbol of it. Aleph Dam Adam in his original creation was in spiritual illumination. In his original creation, he was illuminated, right? He was in illumination. Spirit breathed into him continually the necessary in spirit inspiration and the da'at to give him superior understanding. But he began eating and appropriating ideas of two powers, right? Of two powers. What were these two powers that, that Aleph Dom, that Adam, right, began to eat and to appropriate? These two powers is Elohim, right? And Ain Elohim. Is Elohim the nature of natures and that which is not the nature of natures? The true good, the true God, the source, the power, and that which is not the source, the power. Or, to keep it simply, right, good and evil, right, the good and evil. And it was a knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of Tob Vira, Tob Ra, Tob Ra, Tob Good, Wit, and Ra. -a. That's the Elohim and the Ain Elohim. That which is Elohim and not Elohim, or good and evil, the result. So the allegory, the Masha, the Mishle, right, of Bereshith, so the parable relates was that he fell away from spiritual life and liberty and all that it involves. You see, because the proof of the fact is that man, right, that man, Right, Adam, Aleph, Dam, man is spirit. He is Ruach, absolute, unconditioned. But man forms an Adamic consciousness. Into that he breathes the breath of life, the Neshama. This in its perfect expression is the Bain Adam, is the son of man. An expression, the Bain Adam, an expression of the divine idea, the divine seed. This Aleph Dam, this first blood, this Adam, is all of what we term the soul, the nefesh, the intellect and body. We are continually at work, at work with this Aleph Dam, with this Adam this first blood, we can breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, the neshama, inspiring him with the idea of life of chai, chayim, in all its unlimited fullness, the pleroma. We can lift up this aleph dam, this Adam, by infusing into him these sublime like the sublime ideas, and in no other way. So this is the first kind of breakdown and build right here. When we speak about the tree, right? The tree and the tree of life. And we speak about the Nahash and the serpent. And the serpent in the Gan, in the Gan Ba'edin, in the Garden of Eden. And what about the reptilian? What about the reptilian in your brain? Right, the reptilian in your brain. So looking at these, um, we could say 
at these metaphors all right but this is science here this is why in order to understand and to get a good understanding of the scripture right the scripture the first thing is the linguistic science the science of the text right the text and the context of the text right and that scientific right scientific literacy of the text right and then the other sciences the other sciences is about the knowledge remember the whole thing was about the knowledge right the knowledge so here we have something that's interesting lucifer aka light bearer godhood snakes search for light aka wisdom snakes sun worship equals aka energy fire aka some say kundalini force snakes the regenerative principle aka phallic worship or sex worship or mm, you know <laughs> yeah snakes right snakes early sumerian version of the cadaceous right the cadaceous this this symbology right this symbology now notice right here when we spoke about Yeshua and we asked was Yeshua as some believe and we understand why they believe that but we just want to share some more of the ancient gnosis the knowledge that Yeshua is that eagle all right we have that eagle now the eagle all right is a very very important ancient symbol we haven't even touched on Mitzrayim Kemet just yet Right, just getting a Hebrew groundation here. So see what it says the eagle, right? He say he was he was he appeared right above at the top of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? And then remember with the Israelites when they came Mimitzraim out of Egypt, it says on eagles' wings. Right? How he brought them out on eagles' wings. Let's show you this right here, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, just to connect the dots right here eagle's wings so let's go right here and let's put eagle's wings eagles and put wings right there let's put wings and here we go right there exodus shemot right shemot the sefer shemot chapter 19 verse 4 it says y'all have seen what i did this is yahweh hey hakadosh baruch hu baruch hashem the holy one blessed be he blessed be the name he who be who he be speaking to i and i and we y'all ye have seen what i did to the egyptians the mitzrayim and how i bear you on eagles wings and brought you to myself now some even put forward the reason man i should share this with you that the garden of eden is a symbol for Mitzrayim, for Egypt. That the Garden of Eden is actually a symbol for the Hecapita, Egypta, or Egypt, Gibbets, Kemet. How do we prove this right here? Well, let's look up, let's look up the garden, right? Let's put garden, right? And let's put Egypt in the search right here. A basic, right, search right here. Now notice right here. We have Genesis chapter 13, Bereshith chapter 13, right? Chapter 13, verse 10, what does it read? And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plains of Yardane of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Lifne Yahuwah before he who be who he be, Jehovah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Amora, Amora. Now, Amora, interesting in the Amharic, in the Royal Amharic, that the Amora is actually a volcano. I don't know if they bring it out right here, but the Amora, right, is actually a volcano, right? Amora, Gamora, Amora. It's actually an A sound, that's a hard sound, Amor, right? It's actually volcano. So what we get to discern from our scientific literacy and study of the scriptures that Sodom was a city that was near Amora, a volcano. Right? So we can put together the destruction that's described right here. Once you recognize what the scribes and their writing has described right here. But note this right here which says, Even as the garden of Yahweh, of Yahuwah, even as the garden of Jehovah, like the land of Mitzrayim. Like the land of what? That's the Kemet. That's Kemet, right? That's, that's, that's the Hegapita, Egypta, the Hegapita. Or the Chut Kapita, Egypt, right? Kemet, 
So here is a likeness here in the first book of Moshe, right? The Hebrew book known as Bereshis, Genesis chapter 13, verse 10, where it's likening the garden, the gan, right? The gan, that's what the garden is, the gan, right? The gan, that enclosure, right? Notice right there, garden, enclosure, noun, masculine, or feminine. See that right there, the garden of Eden, Eden, right? Which is the lights, right? The gan, right? Ganan, ganan, to defend, to cover, to surround, right? To hedge about, to protect, to defend. Why was Adam put there? Even as the garden of Yahweh, like the land of Mitzrayim, as thou comest to Zoar, right? To Zoar, Zoar, right? As you comest to what? Insignificance. Zoar, getting to the root of Zoar. As you come to Likl, right? Zoar, right? Zoar from Zaar. Sa'ar means to grow insignificant, to grow small, to be insignificant, right? To be small, to be ignoble, to be brought low, uh, be made a little one, to be small. Is this what happened, right? After the expulsion from the Gan Ba'aden, right? Of Adam, right? And Adam and Eve from, from that great height, the fall. This is what they call the fall of man. But the fall of man wasn't like they made you believe in counterfeit Christianity. The fall of man was the fall of that consciousness. The fall of that consciousness. And the connection here with that reptilian in the brain. With that serpent in the Gan Ba'aden. Right? In the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Delights. Now... We've all been familiar with, we can see the likeness of this symbology. Now, what does the symbology really mean, right? How is it practical in reality, right? What's the science of this? So we have the serpent symbolism, right? Serpent worship, right? Throughout the ages. But we seek to get to the root right here, 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 getting to the root. Once again, we have the eagle wing. So when Yeshua says... Right, and was that that's the secret um secret book of John, secret book of Yohanan, when he says that he was the eagle, right, he appeared as the eagle above right the tree. Right, the eagle above the tree. Right. There we see it right there, 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 and that tree. You can see that tree also is in man. So we have both the tree in the innermost of the innocence. But then we also have the object lesson outside of us. So note what was told to Adam regarding the tree, right? And also what was spoken concerning the two trees. So there was two trees there, right? The two trees. Now, here, since the script mentions one serpent, one snake, right? This is a perfect kind of a, a word pick, right? This is a perfect word pick for the serpent, right, in the Gan Ba'aden, right, and the role of Yeshua, since some believe that Yeshua, right, may look on the serpent as being Yeshua or Yeshua as being the serpent. Well, we have in the secret book of Yohanan, the Apocryphon of John, right, we get to know that Yeshua is testified as saying that he was the eagle, right, above, and he distinguished between what the role of the eagle was, right, and also what his role was. Just to remind ones and ones in this vlog right here, 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 let's bring this up right here, right? So here we have the serpent, right? Yeshua is speaking, is being asked here. However, he says, I caused them to eat. Hmm. Who's the them? We're speaking about Adam. Well, Wa Hawa and Hawa, Adam and Hawa, or as one say, Adam and Eve. He says, however, I cause them to eat. I ask, this is the apocryphon of Yohanan, of John. He says, I ask the Savior, Adoni, isn't it Ha Nahash? Isn't it the Nahash, the serpent, that caused Adam to eat? Isn't it the reptile, the reptilian, that caused Adam, Aleph Dam, first blood to eat? He smiled and replied, quote, The serpent, Han Nahash, caused them to eat. 
in order to produce the wickedness, the ratchetness of the desire to reproduce that would make Adam helpful to him. You see, that's the reading, but the comprehension. The serpent caused them to eat. Adonenu says, Robenu says, the serpent caused them to eat in order to produce the wickedness of the desire to reproduce. To produce, in order to produce the wickedness of the desire to reproduce, that would make Adam, Aleph Dam, helpful to him. To who's the him there? To Ha Nahash, to the serpent, to the Nahash. Now, as for the eagle, right? As for the eagle right here, 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 let's look up, find on page right here, the eagle. So we can compare and contrast right here. Here we have the eagle, right? One time right here, he says right here. And see, here we can see how it all comes together right here. Where he says, Sophia, speaking of wisdom, right? Chokmah, our sister, came down descending innocently so as to regain what she had lost. Therefore, she is called life, chai, chai, life, and mother of the living of the chayim, the one from the providence. Providence is like when they say um, Jehovah Jireh, Jireh in the Hebrew is Yireh, Yireh. Yireh both mean to see, right? Yireh from Rea, Rea, right? To see Yireh. Right? Yahweh Yireh, Jehovah Iri, Yireh, and also to provide. That's where we get providence from. So the one from the providence of the authority of Shemayi, by her assistance, people can achieve perfect knowledge, da'at. Now let's just show you another verse here just to kind of double up, right? And even triple up on the proof. So we here we're connecting even the Garden of Eden. Is the Garden of Eden in the Hebrew Scriptures a metaphor for Mitzrayi? Is there something, Habarim, deeper that's going on right here, here, here? Let's speak about wisdom for a moment. Now, wisdom, as even the Book of Wisdom, right? Proverbs, wisdom, it speaks about wisdom from above and it speaks about wisdom from below. Our sister that Robeno Yeshua speaks of, she came from where? But the wisdom here in James, James, Jacob, right? James chapter 3, verse 17 in the Brit Chadash, the New Testament. James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom, the Chokma, or in the Koine Greek, Chokma is known as Sophia. Sophia. We say, like to say when we're speaking of our Sophia, right? Robeno says wisdom is justified by all of her children. The Hebrew Sophia, right? The wisdom that is from above is first peace, is first pure, pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. All right? Let's go right here. All right? But then we have this right here, here, here. Let's go into this right here. Let's go into this right here. Verse 13, James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge? What's the knowledge? Why? Now, here's what's interesting. Because we have to know, which is gnoskoi, and knowledge in the sense of gnosis. And then we have another word in the Koine Greek, right, that comes into the scientific terminology even of these days and time. Epistemon. The epistemon, right? Epistemon. Intelligent experience one having the knowledge of an expert right so this here distinguish this knowledge here right from for example let's just go right here let's just um do we have another word knowledge right here I, that's what i want i like to show you this contrast right here so you can see this contrast for yourself ye shall know let me put know the truth let me put truth and free so we know exactly where we're going with this. Boom. John 8 and 32. And ye shall know. You see the word know right there? Here's where the linguistic, the science of the language is so key. Right? You can avoid a lot of these silly debates and arguments and pseudo-controversies. And y'all shall know. What's the word know? Ginosko. What is ginosko? Right? Ginosko. What is ginosko? 
Ginosko to learn to know, to come to know, to get a knowledge of, perceive, to feel, to become known, to understand, to perceive, right? As an idiom, also sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. It can be used, like it says, and Adam knew his wife in that sense. So it, it links with the Hebrew my da'at, the yada'a, yada'a, to become acquainted with, to know, right, to know. Now we have, you shall know the truth, right, and the truth shall make you free. So now how this one here is connected with, let's go to, to, to science. Let, let's put science here, because we're speaking about science, even the Hebrew science. Let's go to science falsely falsely so you can know what science truly is here we have first timothy chapter 6 verse 20 so here rabbi shaul who is more popularly better known as the apostle paul you know, apostle to the gentiles our brother paulos here to his disciple timothy was timothy he says oh timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. He's saying in oppositions to avoid oppositions of pseudoscience. Say what? Pseudoscience? Yeah, right here, gnosis. You see the word gnosis? Gnosis is science. But this is linked with the word we just went to, you shall know the truth. That was the verb, gnosko, in the Koine Greek, the verb, gnoskos. Here we have the noun, gnosis. And from the, here, we get the Gnostic. You know, so into the Gnostics, the Gnostic, to know the truth. Why well, don't they want you to know the truth? <laughs> right? Knowledge. Yeshua speaks about knowing the truth, gnosko. Also, this word is also used. And not just gnosis, right? But epinosis, that full knowledge, epinosis. So knowledge signifies in general intelligence understanding, right? That knowledge, right? So here we have gnosis. Right, falsely so called is pseudonymous. Pseudo, right? Pseudo nomos. So in pseudonymous, the G5581, right? He says, avoid the profane, right? Babblings and opposition, right? Vain, profane and vain babblings and opposition of pseudo, right? Of pseudoscience or, or, or science falsely so called. So there's true science. And there's science falsely so-called. And there's also Hebrew, right? The biblical and linguistic science. And even here, we are touching on the New Testament, the Brit Hadash. So therefore, this is also getting into the Koina, you could say the Greek science. Not so much the Greek science in that sense, but we're the Hebrew science, right? As our ancestors projected this through the linguistics of the time, like we're using English now, right? In order to communicate the truth. Right? The truth can be communicated in any language, right? Because it's true, right? But certain languages are a little bit better or have been built to communicate. So we have falsely named, right? So just to show some of the different, right, words right here, right? So we have gnosis pseudonymous, very important verse. But let's return to where we were at concerning, concerning wisdom. Right, because in the secret book of Yohanan of John, Yeshua is said to have said that Sophia, our sister, she descended from where? From above. Now, if you read the Proverbs of Shlomo, the Proverbs of Solomon, he speaks about, well, actually, it's wisdom that's a teacher in Proverbs. So when you're reading Proverbs, it's also speaking about these twofold wisdom, the duality of wisdom. You see, discernment is important, right? Discernment, to be able to discern between two very similar things that are not the same. Right. So here in James, right, James chapter three, verse five, we're going to go to this right here. Verse 13, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge? Endued, endued. So the whole phrase here is not just knowledge, but the sense of endued with knowledge is a G 1990 epistemon. Right. Epistemology, you may hear in certain collegiate and scientific circles about, well, what's your epistemology, right? Episteme, right? So here's intelligence, endued with knowledge, 
right? That's the fullest sense of this word episteme, endued with knowledge, and epistamai. And this is a terminology that's also used, right, within science, right, within scientific circles to define and to articulate, right, scientific principles. But who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him, make him shoot out of a good conversation. Let's pause on that word conversation. We're talking about having the science and knowledge of the scripture. That's what science is, that gnosis, right? We have anastrophe, right? Anastrophe. So when it says conversation, you might think it just means like, let's have a chat. Let's just talk. That's not what conversation Right in the 1611 KJV Bible really means the conversation here. The word is anastrophe. What is anastrophe? Anastrophe is one's manner of life, one liberty, right? One's conduct, one's behavior, one's deportment. Now in the Hebrew, this this corresponds to the Hebrew term, the Judaic term called halakha, halakha, bamrinya de akahe. Right? or rimja, so to say, but the akahed or the halaka. Halaka is how we walk it out, how we live it out, right? So we study, right? We study to show ourselves approved, right? You know, um, we study to learn and we learn to do and we seek to walk it out, to live it out, to fulfill it in our liberty. So with that understanding, let's just return to this again. Make him shoo out of a good manner of life, behavior, Right, tried, right, his works with the meekness of wisdom, with the meekness of Sophia, the Hebrew Sophia with Hokma, right, with Tibet. Verse 14, but if y'all, if you all, if, if we all, if y'all have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, in your hearts, the cardia, cardia. Right? So we get cardia, cardiac arrest, right? Cardia, cardia. What's the cardia? The heart, the organ in the animal body, right? Is man, what would you say if I told you that man is a living creature? You'd be like, yay, man is a living creature. But to put it in language that you might understand a little better, what if I told you that man is an animal? Crickets? The heart is that organ in the animal body, which is the center. So in the Hebrew, the science of the Hebrew and Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Shemitic languages, when we say the heart, like it says, and he be cast into the heart of the sea, right? That's like into the midst, the center, the depths. The, the heart symbolizes the center of something. Get to the heart of the matter. So the, the organ in the animal body that is the center of the circulation of blood. What does the scripture teach us about blood? Right? The blood is the life. Don't eat the blood because the blood is the life. Right? And the life is in the blood. So the heart is the center of the circulation of that, that life flow, that life fluid. And hence was regarded as the seat of physical, of phi cycle. The physical life. It's interesting. Are we correct with this? Where I think it was the heart that they, they left in the heart among the ancients when they embalmed. Was that it? That they left the heart? They didn't find much use for the brain? Well, it's kind of interesting as we dig into, well, what is the heart? It denotes the center of all physical, five cycle, right? And spiritual or metaphysical life and liberty. The vigor and sense of the physical, the five cycle life. The center and the seat of the spiritual or the metaphysical, right? Life and liberty. Now here, breaking it down, the soul or mind, mm, the heart from the, in the Hebrew science, when we use this term, people might think we're talking about the heart. And in fact, there is the, the proverb, the wisdom that says that the fool's heart, right? The fool's heart is on his left side and the wise man's heart is on his right side. I, I got to show you this right here, right? We just got to show you this right here. We're going to finish this up and also follow up, right? The fool, right? The fool's heart. Let's just go fool's heart, right? fool's heart and we're seeking to go to proverbs let's go to proverbs right here the fool's heart you know what let's put right here 
on the left side. Let's put left. Let's put the left right there. Boom. Actually, I said proverb slicha, slicha, sauna. You know, um, forgive my apologies. Ecclesiastes 10 and 2, Kohlet the preacher. A wise man's heart is at his right hand. A wise man's heart is at, what, what side is a wise man's heart on? According to the Kohelet, the preacher, Ecclesiastes 10 and 2, a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is where? At his left. Now, everyone, which side is your natural heart? Which side is our natural heart? All right? Most people's natural heart is on the left side. Right? The natural heart is on the left side. But for the kesil, kesil, now kesil is interesting. Kesil in the Hebrew is full, but then kesil also refers to the Orion constellation. It's kind of interesting. The hunter, the kesil, right? Kesil, right? The fool's heart is at his left. So that means that if when we talk about heart, Hebraically, if we're just speaking about this physical heart in our body, that's foolish. That means you have not studied to show yourself approved. You're, you would be disapproved on that. So this is why we study, right? We learn, right? You know, we study to learn and we learn to do. The wise man's heart is at his right hand. But then if you study the physical body, our heart leans or is more on our left side than on our right side in most people, right? There's differences, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule, but naturally most people's heart is on their, their natural heart is on their left side. So what does this mean? This means that we're not talking about, when we speak, mention heart, we're not speaking about the natural, the physical, the fleshy, the carnal-minded heart, right? We're speaking about the lab, right? The lab. So here from the Hebrew, the H3820, what is the lab, right? The lab is the inner man, is the, the, the mind, the will, the heart, the understanding, the inner part, as we say, the innermost, right? The inner part, the midst of things is the heart, the heart of man, the soul, the heart of man. My, the mind, the knowledge, the thinking, the reflection, the inclination, the resolution, the determination, the will, the conscience, the heart, like moral character, genuine morality. The heart also the seat. The heart is the seat of the appetites, right? Because that emotional element, the seat of the emotions and passions, as well as the seat of courage. This is the Hebraic foundation here on the heart, the lay, the heart. It's also used figuratively. So we have the heart in the, it's a twofold, right? The Hebrew, the two truths of the Hebrew, the two truths, right? We have, we can say the inner and the outer, right? We have the, the physical, we have the spiritual, we have the earthly, we have the heavenly, the outer, the inner, the two truths. So the heart, right? Natural heart. Yes, there's a natural heart. But now when it's used figuratively, right? Not the letter of ha Torah, right? But the spirit, not the letter of the law, but the spirit, the figurative sense, right? Very widely for the feelings, right? So it's about heart, the will, the heart, and even the intellect, right? So the heart usually can describe, if it's not describing the physical heart, it's describing feelings, or, or one's will, or even the intellect. Likewise, heart is used for the center of anything. So check this out, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, right? Ecclesiastes 10 and 2. A wise man's heart is at his right hand. So we're not speaking of the wise man's heart is not his physical heart. The fool's heart my, the fool's heart is his physical heart. He follows his carnal-minded heart, right? And that's how he falls apart. But here, 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 let's just fulfill this right here, right? So we was at, which verse was at? But, right, but, right, if y'all have bitter envies and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth and lie not against the reality, right? Because truth is the reality. Lie not against the reality, right? Now, here's what we distinguish with wisdom. 
this wisdom, right? This wisdom, right? This Sophia. Now the Gnostics have a terminology. The Hokma is wisdom, and Akamot. Akamot is this counterfeit. So there's wisdom true, right? There's wisdom, the mother true. Right? And then there's the counterfeit. The likeness is almost when we look at Revelation, the Chazon Yohanan, and we have Babylon is a woman type, right? But it's a, it's a bad, it's like this counterfeit wisdom. And then we have New Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, in that sense. Proverb, if you study proverbs, it is wisdom. Wisdom is the teacher. So it says, can a woman be a teacher? Well, we're not speaking of just flesh and blood, but the feminine principle is the teacher, right? In the person, we can say of Chokmah in Proverbs, the Mishle Shlomo, very key book. So even when it talks about the bad woman or the harlot, it is speaking of this counterfeit wisdom. So we're not speaking about flesh and blood, right? You know, we're not just speaking about flesh and blood. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Well, oh, hold on. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, earthly, sukkakos, right? right? Some are pneumatic, right? And some are psychic, sukkakos, sukkakos, sukikos, of or belonging to breath, having the nature, the nature, and the characteristics of the breath, the principle of animal life. Right, the animal life. That's the basic. The animal man is a man is a trinity. And we began off, right? We showed you the reptilian. So there's a three man has these tri this triune brain. He has the reptilian, right? He have the mammalian, right? So the reptile is a type of an animal, yes. And the ma a mammal is a type of the animal. Now that third, we could say brain, that higher brain that develops, right, in in the human being's natural evolution, right, develops later, that is the higher, right, that's the higher brain. Is it any wonder they say that people only use five or ten percent? The principle of animal life that men have in common with brutes. Interesting area of the Psalms, it says, man that understandeth not is as the beast that perish. Let me just repeat this once again. A man that understandeth, let's do this right here. Uh, man, 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 oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Man that understandeth not is like the beast that perish. So that means a man without understanding in the divine eye is likened to a beast, though he may be a man. So this explains why in Jonah, it says that both man and beast put on sackcloth and fasted. Have you ever seen an animal, a cow, a goat, or a lion, or a tiger, or something? Any animal putting on sackcloth and fasting? Because not speaking about just the animal, animal, it's speaking about those animal men, right? Remember, it's the principle. So both man, get this here, because sukkakos come from the psyche. Psyche is the coin of Greek word for, for soul. So do animals have soul? That's why Shlomo Solomon asked that question within Kohelet in Ecclesiastes, right? Who says that when man, when the animals die, they go down, but man, he fly upward. Don't they all both go to one place? So the principle of animal life that men have in common with the brutes or the beasts, governed by breath, the sensuous nature, right? We call the satana of the senses, the sa sensuous nature with its subjection to appetite. One becomes subjected to appetite and passion. See, this is where the reptilian aspect comes into play. And this is where the reptilian aspect came into play in Moshe's first book, right, in Bereshith, even in the Gan Ba'edin. Note that Strong's definition, called the Sukkos, sensitive, that is animate, in distinction on the one hand from pneumaticos. Pneumaticos is relating to the human spirit, right, the human spirit or the rational soul. So when we're speaking about the sensual, the sukkakos, we're speaking about the irrational psyche, the irrational soul. That's the soul that can be tempted by that reptile. 
right? As part of the man, which is akin to Elohim. So the rational soul, right? The human spirit, which is also linked with the rational soul, is akin, kith and kin to Hilehim, to the Elohim, to the nature of nature, and serves as his instrument or organ. That which possesses the nature, the nature of the rational soul, belonging to a spirit or a being higher than man, right? But inferior to Elohim, it is said here in this definition, belonging to the divine spirit of Elohim, Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, one who is filled with and governed by the Ruach of Elohim, of the power, the true good, the true God, pertaining to the wind or breath, windy, exposed to the wind. It says blowing right there. But notice this, Strong's bringing out very well here where it says non-carnal. That's why the Rasta mind, original elders taught I and I, and I not want no carnal mind, right? We have to go higher. Right? We have to iritically, spiritually evolve, right? The non-carnal, non-carnal mind. That is humanly ethereal as opposed to the gross, right? Or the diamonali the diamoniacally, diamond, like demono demonology, right? Diamoniacally, right? A spirit concretely divine, says supernatural, regenerate, says religious, but the basic sense of this is spirit. So we have the sukkakos, right? That's the sensitive, that's the irrational soul, right? It's distinct from the spiritual, right? You could say the regenerated, right, soul. So this kind of irrational soul leads to degeneration, right? Or we could say leads to death, Right? The regeneration leads to life, right? Which is the higher or renovated nature. The spiritual nature is the higher or the renovated nature. And on the other, right, the distinction on the other with the right, the fusikos. What is fusikos? Fusikos is produced by nature, that which is inborn, right? The inborn, right? This inborn conception, Rastaman said, inborn, agreeable to the natures, governed by the instincts of the natures, right? Here we have the physical, the five cycle, that is by implication, the instinctive, right? The natural, the nature of L, the natural, right? Which is the lower or the bestial nature. So we have the bestial nature. So here, even here we have a threefold, a trinity, right? So here in speaking of the wisdom, right? It says, this wisdom descendeth not from above. So that is not the Sophia that Robeno Yeshua is speaking to us here, here, here within the secret book, the Apocryphon of Yohanan, where he says right here, Sophia, our sister, came down. She came from above, not from below. She came from above. She came down descending innocently so as to regain what she had lost. Therefore, she is called life, chai, chai, life, and the mother right, of the living of the chayim, the one from the providence, right, Yere, Yahweh Yere, Jehovah Jireh, of the authority of Shemaim, by her assistance, people can achieve perfect knowledge. And here, Yeshua says, I appeared as an eagle perched on the tree of knowledge, on the eighth, right, the etz da'at, ha da'at, the tree of knowledge, etz da'at, which is the epinoia, epinoia, from the pure providence of light in order to teach them and raise them, rise them up, get up, get, stand up, right? To raise them up, right? Arise, O oh God, for you shall judge, right? Inherit all nations, you shall inherit, all. raise them up from sleep's death, sleep's death, for the two of them were fallen and aware of their nakedness, Epinoia appeared as a being full of light. She enlightened their minds. But remember, here we have the wisdom from above. Now note this, 
right, as we compare the Gnostic Gospels, right, with the Brit Chadash, the New Testament. Here in James' Gospel, James writes that if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. That's what the Nachash did. The serpent, the reptilian, the serpent in the garden, the reptilian, the, your brain, lie against the truth. But that sort of wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, is a, is a ground, is like the ground spirit. It's not the higher, not the Zion spirit, it's a heaven spirit, it's a height spirit, but is a earthly, is sensual, right? It's according to the satana of the senses, right? And devilish. Right, it's devilish. Diomonides. Right, what's diomonides? Resembling or proceeding from an evil spirit, demon like, from an evil spirit. So we have diamond. Right, it's interesting. Diamond is a power, right? A kind of a nature, right? So you can see where the diamond here is a god. Right? or a goddess, an inferior deity, whether it's good or bad. But in the New Testament, the Brit Hadasha sense, it is classified as an evil spirit, right? an evil spirit from Dio. Dio, right? in the coin of Greek, to distribute fortunes, fortuna. A diomone, right? or supernatural spirit of a bad nature, a bad nature. Right, so that's where this is wisdom that, that's the mother, it's like the Babylon mother of harlots. Get that connection there. So we have the bad, right, feminine type, but then we have the good feminine type, we have the bad masculine mind type, and the good mind type. Choose, right, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion. There's what there's confusion, right. A catastasia, a catastasia. What's a catastasia? It's instability, a state of disorder, disturbance, confusion, Babylon, and every evil work. Now, here's the wisdom we come into. Here's, here's the true wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above. Did Robeno Yeshua in the apocryphon of Yohanan, of John, did he not say that our sister Sophia, right, the true wisdom, where did she come from? From above. Here in James, the first bishop of the church at Jerusalem, James, what does he say here in James chapter 3, verse 17? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without and without hypocrisy. And to seal this up right here, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace and shalom of them that make peace that make shalom or that in that sense reconcile erene what's erene erene a state of national tranquility exemption from the rage and havoc of war peace between individuals harmony concord security safety prosperity felicity because peace and harmony make and keep things safe and prosperous that's why he says blessed are the peacemakers of moshia's shalom the way my right? and this is the way that leads to shalom that leads to yeshua yeshua to salvation to victory of true christianity not counterfeit christianity but true Christianity, right? The true way of Moshiach, the true Nazarene way, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its Yeshua, of its salvation, of its preservation through Moshiach. And so fearing false evidence appearing real, nothing, fearing nothing from Elohim and content with its earthly lot of whatever sort it is, that blessed state of devout and upright men, some say after death. But you know, the death is, the scripture says, you, we have to mortify our members which be on earth. Mortify, mortify means to put to death, right? So one needs to understand this, right? So we're not talking about after, you have to, you have to die, in a sense, before you die in order to live. You get it? So here, here, here. 
So we have this particular verse right here. Chant. We're gonna we're gonna return to this reasonment, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, because this has been like a full reasonment right here. And although we sought to bring out, you know, the whole serpent, <laughs> you know, concerning what well, we have, the, the but the connection here is with wisma, right? With wisdom, but more on who and what was the Nahash, the serpent, the serpent in the gun, in the gun Ba'aden, in the garden of the light, the serpent in the garden. Or the serpent in your brain, right? And the two wisdoms, right? The two wisdoms. Can you discern? Can you distinguish between the two wisdoms? It's the key, right? To discern. Hearing, hear, right? Hearing, hear, and perceive, right? You know, seeing, see, and perceive, hearing, hear, and understand, right? And be converted from the stray way with Zohar Darek. More to come, brothers and sisters. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom.